Why is it important to build and maintain trust? We're going to dive into that topic in today's episode. Hello, my name is Z. And I'm Rich. Hey, Z. So are you excited about going to the Thayer Leadership Training? I am, man. It's this week. I actually fly out to New York City tomorrow to enjoy the city a few days before the training next week. Uh, believe it or not, my first time going to the city, third time in New York, first time going to New York City. So I'm excited to try some food. I'm going to see a Broadway show. Definitely going to enjoy that. And ironically enough, I just got back from PTO last week. And this is why I'm wearing the shirt. I'm still in that vacation mode, um, picturing myself in the beach, enjoying some sun. But um, it's interesting, though, that during my time off and coming up and enjoying New York is that a lot of times we think of PTO as something that we have to do, right? Like use it or lose it. Uh, by the end, you know, this is my story. Maybe you have your own, but, you know, there goes a year. And then you, you realize, oh, my gosh, I have a lot of time I need to use up. So you kind of force it. You just throw something on the calendar. And maybe you're working and all this stuff. And I said, you know what? No, I have to be purposeful in scheduling this out in advance, putting time in the calendar, um, letting my team know, preparing them while I'm out. And more importantly, like, what's my intent going into this, you know, purposeful time off? Is it to relax? Is it to disconnect? Is it to enjoy nature, uh, spending time with loved ones, or just unplug? I mean, there's so many reasons why you would. And, and that's what I've learned, you know, during this time off and now going to enjoy New York. Again, purposeful. What am I going to do? Well, I'm going to enjoy the city. I'm going to find things that I've always wanted to do, take off my bucket list and be, and, and just soak it in. Uh, but that's it. But you know what? That can't happen unless you trust your team, you trust your partners, you trust um, that everything's going to be fine when you get back. And that is that is going to be key. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Yeah. So there was a few things you said in there that I want to touch on. So the first is purpose, purposeful. I love that, you know, being purposeful with anything you do, right? Whether that's taking time off, you know, being present in that moment, whether you're, you know, working on an activity, being purposeful in that activity, just being it present in that moment, right? Mm -hmm. Second, the whole trust thing, you know, you, you mentioned preparing your team for being off, um, you know, that right there is actually what today's episode is about trust, building and maintaining trust. But before we dive into that, um, you know, last episode, we talked about um, who should be, a, a, who can be a leader, um, you know, what it means to be a leader. And uh, the, the illustration that you gave us with the final and the janitor, oh, that was, that was an amazing story. And it, by the way, if you missed that, you want to go back and check that last episode. It was an amazing episode. So. Yeah. No, the, you know, again, I, we're, we're getting, you know, a lot of, we're building upon these episodes. And I think, you know, again, we're being purposeful of like, hey, what, what would be a good episode to follow the previous one? What is relevant? What is topical? And 100%, right? Like right now, we're at a stage where, a lot of folks that are listening, first of all, want to know, hey, should I be? I, I'm curious. Am I a leader? But then the next thing is, let's say you, you finally get to that stage and be like, yes, I want, I am a leader or I want to go into leadership. I want to take on, I know it's a responsibility, but it's something I'm passionate about that I want to do. Well, the next thing is like, okay, first of all, while you're in leadership, you have to set that foundation of trust. Um, this is something that I think we take for granted. You know, it's one of those things that when, when it's there, it's it's there, right? It's like you, you know, some use analogy analogy of water. When it's abundant, you know, people use it freely. They don't they don't they, they, they don't notice it, right? It's there. It's great. Everything's blossoming and flourishing. But when it's not there, that's when people notice notice that it's not it's not present, right? If it's a drought, lack of it, what have you, things don't grow, they don't flourish, and it's 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 a, not a good situation. And that applies that in your work environment. And as a leader, you have a big yeah, big responsibility but also a big impact when it comes to setting that foundation of trust and building it and maintaining it so it's a, it's a nice transition into that saying okay great now what are you doing regarding trust within your team yeah absolutely and trust is such a key foundational piece right you know something to build off of you can kind of you can tell in those teams that have that trust you know the way they gel you know even even you know just looking at sports teams right you can tell the team the trust you know you pass the ball you trust that the other person is going to do what they need to do and take care of the take care of business right so 
Oh, I mean, that's a great example, 100%. Yeah, you know, you think about those successful teams and, you know, you follow probably follow your favorite sport or if it's not a sport, it can apply to re- anything, you know, your team, your organizational team. But also if you think about performing arts, I'm going to go to Broadway, right? There's got to be trust within the cast members that everybody's going to have their line, hit their marks. And even even if somebody makes a mistake, someone's going to have their back. They're going to pick it back up. They're going to keep moving forward, right? Mm -hmm. They're not going to let it just drop and be like, ooh, you know what? Rich is struggling right now. I got him. I'm jumping right in. I'm going to build him up, right? I think that's what we do, too, in our podcast. As we're going, we're like, okay, you know what? I I feel like we're kind of losing it or whatever. I'm going to bring it back in. We kind of – we start to know each other, right? Right. We we start to feel um, what are those areas that keep things moving. So that's that's 100%. So – I don't know. I think the way to start off is maybe defining it, maybe understanding what is trust. Yeah, yeah. So let me ask you first before I give you my definition. I like throwing stuff at you. (laughs) Yeah. How would you define trust? Trust. So trust is something that, you know, you you definitely have to to be consistent with. You have to uh, keep coming to the table and showing you know, showing up every single day. You can't just do, when you tell somebody to do something once, twice, three times, you trust in them that they do it each time. And whether they do it, whether they deliver on that, that's kind of the key piece right there. Keep showing up, keep coming back to the table. That, in in my opinion, that's that's how I define trust. And I think you're spot on. Yeah, it's one of those things that a lot of people, a lot of people say, hey, I just, I, I trust everybody, I give it freely. But there are layers, there are levels. And to your point, when it's a solid foundation in a relationship and a partnership, or what have you, it's built over time. That's what mm-hmm. we talked about. Hey, building trust. Right. It's the actions you take, the consistency. Are you there when you say you're going to be there? Are you going to Are you going to do what you promise you're going to do? And that really, the definition for me, it's just definitely it's the confidence um, that is built over time with somebody's care, uh, credibility meaning that they're competent and they're also somebody that has good character, yep. right? The things that you're doing, you're doing it because you're doing it for the greater good, for a relationship, for whatever. You, you, you know, you, you have good morals, values. You also have good intent. You're doing it to help out. You're doing it to help grow or meet that goal. And then the last part is the competencies. You know what you're doing. You know, if you're going to be a leader, you have to be con- know that you're competent. Hey, I know how to le- manage a team, how to deliver results, how to get things done. And that just starts to build that solid foundation where now your team starts to come to you. And, you know, hey, when, I, when I'm going to talk to Rich and I have a problem or I'm dealing with something, I know that he's going to try to help me or listen instead of trying to critique me, put me down, uh, judge me, whatever, right? And that's going to actually be the opposite. You're going to, you know, lose trust quickly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm glad you mentioned that as well. So you, you, we, and we discussed this again in a few episodes back about the soft skills, right? You, you mentioned the critiquing and things like that. No, when, when, when we have these conversations, we listen first as a person, right? And that's so important, especially in that foundation, just to build, even build trust, right? You want to know that somebody cares about you as a person in order to, you know, really truly trust them. Like there's no ulterior motives. There's nothing, you know, it, yeah. it's, it's genuine, right? Yeah, because the opposite of trust a suspicion right? right you start to be like what what's the agenda what yeah. are you trying to get out of this um let me go back to what you said and, I, and you said this already last time and, and you said it again and i want I, it's interesting when you when i hear the word soft skills right um it's it's it, the, the the word in context you know we kind of take it when i hear someone say hey you know you need to develop your soft skills um i feel like sometimes people see that and they go oh it's secondary it's not a hard skill it's not something that you you know take serious or it's like an afterthought um, I like to think of soft skills as like real life skills. These are the skills that get for like get left or get uh, you know they're they're t- they're left for granted or they're people just kind of put it aside. Way, so. But if we think about it, people that have those skills advance a lot more. They have stronger relationships. They're able to have those really difficult conversations. They're more comfortable in those spaces where folks that don't and take it for I'm just really focused on my hard skills whatever those technical skills, all that. But I can't have a communication with somebody. I can't. So I'm like, oh, ooh, real life skills, man. Let's go. Let's yeah. go. You know, <laughs> And that's where I think that's going to help. If you work on that, you'll build that trust. Um, so a couple things. So we defined it. I think the way to start building that trust is you have to do it from the inside out. And like I said earlier, is you have to have 
um, be somebody credible, somebody that people can trust. And, and only you know that, you know, you got to check in with yourself. Am I giving people somebody to trust? Am I there? Am I dependable? Am I speaking truth? Am I, here's a, here's a tough one. Am I owning up to my mistakes? And not only owning up to it, am I making the corrections and adjusting the things I need to do for the future so they don't replicate or happen again? So I don't know. What, what are your thoughts about that part, about that right there when it comes to yeah yeah no i i like that and i like the whole credibility credibility piece right because uh, as i mentioned before you know you you do something once okay fine you do it consistently time and time and time again that's where it starts to build on itself and that's how you can really tell you know can i trust this person or is this like you know do i give them something a task a, a, a deal like do i do i put this responsibility on them and they'll get it done maybe 50 percent of the time you're holding your breath like Oh, I hope they get it done. I hope they do it. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah and, that's a, and that's a, that's and I'm not going to say it's easy. It's definitely going to take time. It's going to take practice. It's going to take you willing to let this go. And it's it's not easy, man. And you know, we're now talking about okay, so we defined it. Now we're going into how do I start building? Well, building against from the inside out. Um, am I giving somebody to trust? So think about this as well. When somebody approaches you for something or asks for help um, or needs help. Are you saying, nope, I can't help, nope, can't do that, no, but you know, are you doing it because, you, you know, whatever reasonings, are you giving them a reason? So, like, if you say, hey, Z, I need help with this, I'm going to be out, nope, can't, can't do it, I'm busy, you're not building trust. Right. It's more like you're kind of like, well, I can't rely on Z, he's always saying no, I don't, I don't even want to ask him anymore. But if you say, hey, can you help me, I'm like, you know, what, what, what day are you looking at again? What exactly do you need help with? Um, what are the, okay, if, you know, yeah, I can totally do that. Mm -hmm. Or, you know what, I, I can't, but guess what? Tony and from the team can help out or whatever, right? You're mm -hmm. offering, you're, you're engaging in the problem solving for that individual and you truly genuinely care. And there are going to yeah. be moments that you can't even help them, yeah. but you truly, you've made the effort, right? Mm -hmm. You engage, you lean in. Well, we're so busy and with our work that we just, yeah, no, can't, sorry. Shutting it down. <laughs> right? um, so that's the first one, someone of credibility. Um, another one and it kind of complements that is you have to start depositing into, or you have to get to know your team. Um, if you're a leader and you're not, if you're not having, first of all, frequent one-on-ones, we call them connections here. If you're not getting to know them, besides just going into those connections and saying, did you do your, did you do it? Are you on target? What's your deadlines of all this stuff, right? To business, but you're not taking the time to get to know them during those meetings. How are you, hey, how are you doing? How are the kids? Did you, um, you know, were you able to build that pergola you're working on? How was your vacation? You know, yeah. how was New York? What food did you try? Finding those opportunities to bond and connect is going to start building that trust. And we call that depositing into somebody's emotional bank account. Yeah. Are you investing in them? Are you knowing? Are you finding things in common? Um, that way you can start building that relationship and that trust is going to be build, build, build stronger and stronger. Yeah, that's that was exactly what I was thinking as you were describing that is just strengthening that. It's almost like the glue, right? Yeah. Like you you continuously show up, so you show the credibility, but then when you um, you know, kind of relate to them as a person or, you know, you show interest in and in how they're doing, how they are as a person, you know, it just kind of it almost lowers the guard down, right? It lowers the guard down and you're like, "Oh, you know, these people do care about me. My boss does care about me." And then, you know, from that perspective, it just, you know, I I know personally for me, when I feel like my my peers, even my my boss, my peers, my coworkers, whoever, if I feel that they care about me, I'm willing to show up more for those type of people. Like, yeah. oh, I don't want to let these people down. I don't want to, you know, I, yeah. I definitely want to show up and give the best 100%. I always do, but especially, specifically with those people, no matter how busy I am, right? You, you mentioned, you know, being busy. I, I, we're all busy and we're all busy almost a hundred percent of the time, but it's like, okay, I know, but I care about you as a person and yeah. I want to help you out. So I'm going to find a way, even if it is saying, oh, Hey, I, I can't, I may not be the best person, but Todd can, you know, and that's still helpful, you know, just yeah. referring. You're, 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 you're continuing the conversation, the problem solving, you're, you're generally trying to help them out and they know that. And there's going to be times you can't. And I always say that. You can't always um, do something. It's, it's just sometimes you're not able to, but at least they know that you tried, um, and you know that's all we ask, right? Um, so going back to the previous episode, we talked about the see, speak, behave when it comes to leadership. You know, am I seeing you do the right things? Are you speaking in the way a leader should be speaking, and are you behaving? The same thing applies with trust, right? When you're when you're dealing with somebody, you're trying to establish that credibility and that trust with somebody. 
are they seeing you do these things, right? You know, it's like, hey, I'm truly leaning in. I'm facing you. I have, um, if I'm virtual, I'm going to turn on my video because this is, this is an important conversation. Um, and, and my speaking, right? Meaning that, hey, I'm actively engaged, listening and asking questions, being curious. How, how, you know, what, um, what do you mean by that? Can you tell me more? Help me understand. Instead of, why would you do that? That's weird. That's dumb. You know, it's like, no, you're not speaking in trust. And then the behavior, right? Okay, I said I'm going to do this. I'm going to follow up. I'm going to send you an email. I'm going to f- whatever, and I'm doing it, right? So that, that, that applies here as well. You know, it's that cycle. You're doing it, and people, people and, and it all just works, works nicely. Yeah, absolutely. See, speak, and the behave. last one, behave. See, speak, and behave. That, that in addition, I, my mind went to trust. So see, speak, and behave. When you do those yeah. things, that's kind of the pillar, right, for trust, right? So yeah. Maybe you think about, too, when you hear that, you probably think, you know, hey, you're, you're, you're um, not only are you, are you talking and talking, talking, but you're walking it, too, right? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, another thing too, there's you when know, when it comes to trust, there's a lot of things that you can do. So when you're having conversations or when you're trying to build build um, build trust, is that initially when you're having conversation with somebody you're trying to get to know, right? It's alright. State your intent. You know, hey, the the reason I want to get to know you is I want to build a, a strong relationship or a foundation, or I want to get I want a partner. State that intent, and then kind of set um, share what's important to you. Like, you know how we talked about building that emotional bank account? Well, I think it's kind of, it would be helpful if you were to tell me, hey, these are things that you can do to build trust with me. Yeah. What are some things that I can do to build trust with you? Right. It may sound a little weird and scripted, I know, but there's other ways that you can say it. But just say, hey, this is what I value. Sure. This is what I value and what, you know, what really is important to me when it comes to working in a, in a partnership. What, what do you value or what, what do you, uh, what, what's important to you? Yeah, exactly. So yeah. you can be on that same page, almost like a love language, right? We'll call it a trust language here. <laughs> I like how we just throw in the, yeah, the purposeful <laughs> time off trust language. Uh, yeah, and that's that's what it is, man. You don't have to be like, hi, oh, this is how I this is how I see trust. How do you see trust? If it doesn't sound natural, use use a, use the language and words that work for you. Yeah. But as long as you get to know, hey, how can I build um, that equity of trust with you? Um, and also, what can I do to not um, damage Destroy. that yeah. equity of trust with you. So that's that's really it. But let's talk about the um, the benefits and best practices because I know a lot of folks are probably going, okay, great, we got it. We know the definition. We know um, that these are things that I can do, right? And there's tons of examples out there as a leader. And, 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 I, and I, I want to touch on this before we go in there, actually. Um, birthdays, celebrations. Are you doing those things for your teammates? Because if that's something they, they truly value, are you doing that? Are you sending them birthday cards? Are you acknowledging them? We use a recognize tool here that we send out recognitions and, and point values. Um, you know, I think I've seen some leaders do like, you know, uh, gift cards to movie theaters. You know, if they value time with their family, that could be a great thing. If they value time with their spouse. Um, you know, a simple card. You know, sometimes flowers are hit and miss. You know, some yeah. people really like them and some don't. You know, I'm not a big flower person myself. I'm like, oh, they die right away. They're great to look at and there they go. But some people value them. So kind of figuring out what they like to build that trust. Uh, and here's, again, story time. Story time with Z. Um, I had a leader here at Insight, and um, I, I didn't ask for permission, so I'm not going to say their name. But this leader asked how – they shared a story, how they um, were on a business. They were, you know, a lot of our leaders do, do a lot of traveling. So they were traveling from office to office, partner to partner, client to client. Um, when they came home after a long week of travel, they um, got notification that one of their leaders, one of their direct leaders, um, one of their family members passed away. That meant a lot mm-hmm. to them. Um, and they have a good, strong relationship. It's you know they uh, this in the, this 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 teammate of theirs direct report really means a lot, and they they've known each other for years. Um, well, the the ceremony or what have you or the the uh, you know the Pino. what do we call that? Um, um, they were gonna they were gonna do remember, you know some service for okay. them, and uh, it was that same that leading up to that weekend they just got back oh, they're right. exhausted they oh just, like a wake or something they could even yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. they could easily said you know what I'm tired I, I'm just not gonna go I can't but they knew that this this teammate that would be so important for them to go that they just said you know what I gotta suck it up this is something that's gonna be important to them they're gonna value they, they really would appreciate this and um, I'm gonna go ahead and just go. So they, they showed up and meant a lot to that leader and talk about 
building a lot of equity in, in that trust. We're just like, man, they, that, they, and they even knew. They just went through a lot of travel. You took time. I know you're probably exhausted, but you still made time for me in this difficult time in my life. Yeah. So just those moments, right, when you think about that, that was more, you know, very heavy area there, right? But there could be celebrations, graduations, big events, right? I, I When I joined Inside a, lot, a long time ago, I got my citizenship. My team made a big deal out of it. They decorated my desk and stuff like that. So those things – Right there really go a long way, and you just remember, and it just builds strong foundation of trust. Yeah, absolutely. So on the flip side of that, I know you, you mentioned you know the trust eroding trust, right? Mm-hmm. Let me ask you something. Can you rebuild that, or how long does it take? What's the Is there a right answer to that? Is there a set time limit, or what does that look like? That's, a, that's an amazing question, and, and it all depends on, you know, depends on the, the nature of the loss. So if it's, say, for example, it was something that, you know, I asked you to work on a report for me while I was on vacation. I come back and you didn't do it, but it's no big deal. I can I can do it. It's going to take a little extra time. Ow, ow, you lost a little bit there, but the nature of the loss wasn't huge. But let's look at, hey, there's a major account of mine. I've been working on years for this. It's a big commission that's attached to it. Um, and if we lose this account, this is like our last straw. They're going to be leaving the business and we no longer have that. So let's say that same scenario, but that loss is that much detrimental. It's going to be more difficult. It's like, oh, dude, that was a huge loss, right? Um, and I think that just depends on that. So for me, regardless of the size, though, you have to continue to engage and you have to re- rebuild again. And even if sure. it's going to take you a long time, you have to continue to show up, demonstrate that. Because as soon as you stop, all that hard work is going to go back again. And it's going to take you a long time. So just be patient. Stay the course, prove that you can, but ultimately it's going to be up to that person and whether they extend it or not. You can't force them. Yeah. You know what I mean? So um, that's a great question, though. I think a lot of times, especially when you're talking about those relationships at work, like, hey, just continue to show up, continue to see, speak, behave, um, and eventually, hopefully with time, they will, it, will just, it will get back. But ultimately it's up to that person when they, when they want to do it. Yeah. So we we talked about a little bit about, you know, the trust and, and, you know, kind of building a stronger foundation, right? We see it in teams, you know, whether it's a sports team, whether, you know, even on teams, you know, in your work environment, right? You know, you kind of, uh, you can identify those stronger teams and they have that level of trust with each other, right? You, You can, you know, go off and have a meeting together and then like disperse and know that they're handling business and you trust in them, trust that they're taking care of what they need to take care of, trust that they're doing what they need to do. And you, you can kind of just sit back and just look and say, man, I want to be a part of those teams. You know, that's, it's amazing. That's a great transition into the benefits, right? And best practices. So what you describe is what you, what is that, what a high performing team looks like, you know, high trust team. Yeah. You, they have that if factor. Like when you go and you're a part of their meetings, like, you know, that, they just, they, they really get along, right? They're gelling, they're throwing jokes around, but they're also, when it comes to the difficult decisions or having um, tough conversations, they lean in, but they're respectful and kind, but still they challenge, right? They push, hey, I, I disagree with that. And this is why, hey, I want to challenge that. You know what? I want to dive into that a bit more because X, Y, Z, but those conversations are energizing. They're not, they don't tear down. They actually build, hmm. right? So that, that's a benefit of it. If you have a high performing team, a high trust team, you see that. And to your point, I want to work. I want to. I want to be a part of that team. Yeah. Um, you know, if you ever, if you, and I've, I've been in situations where I join these meetings, and I'm like, dude, this is amazing. I I want to. I want to be a part of this team now. Can I join every meeting? Yeah. The opposite, to your point, you see those teams where they either don't have meetings, or they have meetings after meetings after meetings. Nothing gets done. It's just boring. Right to the right to. To the point, nobody is really interacting. Nobody's participating. Nobody's leaning in. You're just like, dude, I don't want to be. It's, you can just feel it, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And with that, the better benefits is that um, you know the the speed of things goes up, so you get the things done faster. But at the same time, the cost, what you pay for on on mistakes and things like that, go tremendously low. Mm-hmm. So you, you you speed up your process because you know that you're doing what you're doing. You don't have to repeat the work. Um, you trust that the other person is doing so you don't have to double check. You don't have to do all these things. But the amount of errors go down tremendously, uh, rip, all that. So there's, there's a huge benefit there. Um, the other thing, too, is that, you know, we talk, you talked about earlier about breaking down those walls. It, it's going to be different for everybody. Some of us are very private. You no, 
so we don't we don't disclose as much. And, and with time, it will go down once people say, "Well, yeah, you're you build that credibility with me," and that's where you know we can really dive into the good the good work, getting into those conversations and getting to the high performing team. Yeah. So you you said something about the the, the teams and and leaning into difficult conversations that really kind of struck me and took me. It, it, the first thing that came to mind was it's almost like a family. It's a family dynamic, right? Like you, everybody has you know their their quarrels and you know things like that. You lean into it, you talk about it. It might be tough, but at the end of the day, you know you're a family, right? And that's kind of along those same lines. You might have to have this the difficult conversations among your team. But, you know, at the end of the day, and, and back to assuming positive intent, right? Because that's what we do, you know, in leadership is always assume positive intent. Yeah. Until other, until something, until C-speed behave contradicts that, right? Yeah. And like, okay, now I can't, I can't, right? And that's right. where they have to rebuild it with you. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's a lot more that we can unpack on this. But just setting the table once again, right? Saying as a leader, going into a leadership role, first of all, identify, you know, am I a leader? Should I be a leader? I know I have a responsibility. Am I going in for the right motivation, motive? Knowing all that and saying, yeah, I definitely, this is what I want to do. I want to see my team succeed. I want to grow, develop my team, whatever motivation you have around that. Next thing is, okay, I need to start building that foundation of trust. And uh, a great book, um, Patrick Lencioni talks about how to overcome the five dysfunctions of a team. And it's a pyramid. And the very first, first part is you have to build trust. Um, if you're not building it, then everything else is going to be difficult to overcome. Um, after that, once you have that solid foundation of trust, then you can have healthy conflicts, debates. Um, everybody will you know, deliver on their commitments. People are going to be held accountable and get things done, and ultimately you'll have those results. So, again, that just shows you the power of that. But people take it for granted. It, you know, it's there, it's not, but when it's not, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hurt. It's gonna hurt your performance and hurt your team and your culture. Yeah. So we talked about, you know, what trust is, how to build and maintain it, and some of the benefits of it. So is there anything I missed today? You know what? Um, no. I mean, we covered we covered those areas. There's a lot more we can unpack. Honestly, that could have been an episode for each one of those. We just kind of, you know, putting an, an overall uh, blanket over that or overall uh, o an overview over that. Well, future episodes, we can even dive in one of those at a time if you want, you know, really yeah. dive into that. But I would say this, just to recap this, right? Um, if you are currently looking into leadership or you're in a leadership role, take a moment right now to think about, hey, where, where is the trust level in my team at this moment? You might say, hey, there's, I have trust foundation with a few of my teammates, but not everybody. Maybe I don't have any at all. Or you know what? Yeah, solid foundation. Fantastic. So first of all, take inventory. Second, uh, whatever that inventory is, what are the things I need to do? Do I need to uh, build? If I haven't yet, if I, my answer is no, I haven't. I just, we just get right to business. We do the thing, well, this is where I need to build. The positive emotional bank account. Talk more than just work. Get to know your teammate. Get to know what they value, how to, what, what, what you need to do to build that trust with them. And then you share yours as well. So it's reciprocal. If you currently have, it's a 50 50, a few, a few not. Okay, well, for the ones I don't, I need to build. For the ones I do, and then if you do, then I need to maintain. You know, am I, am I following through? Am I not going to do anything that's going to erode that trust? Um, and that's it. So just you know, think about those actions. What do they value? What do they respect? And from there, moving forward, you're going to be totally fine. And um, just like an automobile, you know, if you don't maintain it, if you don't get the oil change and do the maintenance over time, it's going to erode and it's going to break down. So think of it that way as well. Join us in our next episode as Z shares his Thayer experience and to hear firsthand how some of our leaders develop their teams.